Hi, and welcome to this lesson on Gibbs free energy. In the last lesson, we had a look at inferring entropy changes from our equations, and we can say that we can predict by comparing the number of gaseous molecules and the overall number of molecules between the reactants and the products. Here, we are going to look at taking entropy and enthalpy together and calculating something called the change of Gibbs free energy. And again, this tells us whether a reaction is feasible or not. The key terms that are useful today are enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, of course, and entropy. Make sure you've covered our lessons on both enthalpy and entropy before you move on to this topic. A reminder, so enthalpy, it is the heat exchange between the system and the surroundings at constant pressure during a chemical reaction. And then we've got entropy, so we've just studied this. It is a measurement of the disorder of and the randomness of a system. And we've learned how to calculate a value for that as well. And today we're introducing Gibbs free energy. What this does is it takes into account both the enthalpy change and the entropy change of a system. A reaction's feasibility depends on two factors. So the entropy change that we calculated in the previous lesson and also the enthalpy change, which we've calculated in previous lessons also. With those two factors, we can calculate something called the Gibbs free energy change. And with that, we can work out whether a reaction will happen spontaneously or not. And we can also work out the temperature at which they can work spontaneously, because you can see here there's a temperature value and that can be really, really useful. Here's our equation and their units. With our Gibbs free energy change, if it is a positive value, then the reaction is not feasible. If it's a negative value, then our reaction is feasible. However, there are some limitations for this when using it as a tool to work out a reaction's feasibility. So it does not take the rate of reaction into account. So if a reaction has a very, very high activation energy, the reaction rate would be so slow that you'd not notice the reaction was taking place even if the Gibbs free energy value was negative. Here's a useful table. So it shows us that if a reaction is exothermic and has a positive entropy change, then the reaction is feasible and the Gibbs free energy change is always going to be negative. Conversely, we can say that if a reaction is endothermic and it has a negative entropy change, then according to our calculation that we showed you earlier, the reaction will not be feasible because our Gibbs free energy value that will come out would have to be a positive number. The equation for the Gibbs free energy change is really useful because we can actually use it to work out the temperature at which a reaction is feasible. So you can imagine for chemical engineering and all sorts, that's got very useful applications. So when a Gibbs free energy change is negative or zero, then it is feasible. When the Gibbs free energy change is zero, this is the temperature at which the reaction is just feasible. Therefore, I can write this equation down here. So when delta G equals zero, T is equal to the enthalpy change over the total entropy change. So rearranging that equation can be really, really helpful. Let's do an example question where you can test this out. Don't forget to convert your units from entropy, which will always be in joules, into kilojoules. So you're going to have to divide that number by a thousand to convert it into kilojoules. 